If you're looking to visibly see weight loss and body recomposition results in just 30 days, then there are 10 things you can be doing right now to help you get there. Let's dive into it. My name's Autumn. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's nutrition human performance. Now you can pick and choose from any of these tips on this list, but really the magic comes together when all of these are done at once. These are tools that when done together can help to reduce body fat, maintain muscle mass, keep the metabolism high, all without feeling hungry or experiencing sugar cravings. And that first tip is sticking to only low glycemic load carbohydrates. Glycemic load is a measurement of how quickly something raises your blood sugar level and therefore also raises the storing hormone insulin. If something is high glycemic load, then it really quickly raises blood sugar versus if something's low glycemic load, then it doesn't really raise blood sugar that much at all. And having this high blood sugar spike can then lead to a low blood sugar crash. Blood sugar crashes are things that cause us to feel hungry and hangry and crave sugar. Plus the blood sugar spikes can throw our body out of the state of fat burning. Low glycemic load carbohydrates Hydrates include some fruits, a lot of veggies, and some legumes. But if you want a full list, I have a blog post that's linked down description below that gives you all the options for low, medium, and high glycemic load carbohydrate. The second is to hit 10,000 steps per day. Now there's nothing really magical specifically about 10,000 steps per day, but it's a whole lot more than the average of 4,000 or so steps per day that most people are getting. And more walking has been linked to lower incidences of obesity. Plus walking outside has been specifically found to help reduce the stress hormone cortisol and highlight levels of cortisol are directly tied to weight gain around the belly. Now you can break it up however you like, but the goal is to try and get 10,000 steps per day. Trying to spread those steps out like morning, afternoon, and evening walk is ideal. I personally like to use a step tracker to help keep track of my progress. I know I'll get a lot of questions about this. This is the Fitbit Versa 4, I believe. Okay, the third is intermittent fasting, but specifically a type of intermittent fasting called ETRF. ETRF or early time restricted feeding is a type of intermittent fasting where you're specifically breaking your fast earlier in the day and having your last meal earlier in the day as well. This method of fasting has been found to be better than other forms of fasting at helping to reduce body fat and also helping to balance out circadian rhythm and hormone levels. So a way that you can incorporate this ETRF is like breaking your fast at 8 a.m. and having your last meal at about 5 or 6 p.m. Obviously adjusting this to your lifestyle as well. But what you eat when you go to break your fast really matters. This is something that I really deep dive in my complete intermittent fasting bundle, which has helped men and women all around the world. The complete intermittent fasting bundle has the intermittent and fasting tips, strategies, meal plans, and recipes to help you achieve your weight loss goals. So if you want to check that out, I will have it linked down description below, but you can also find the complete intermittent fasting bundle on my website at autumnlnutrition.com forward slash shop. Okay, the fourth is to remove all sweetened drinks. This includes the healthier options like fruit juice and kombucha, but obviously also encompasses the not so healthy options like soda. Obviously we know regular soda is not a great option for weight loss, but fruit juice also has a significant amount of sugar with a lot less fiber Plus fruit juice contains a fair amount of fructose, which is a sugar and higher amounts of fructose have been found to lead to issues of liver disease and possibly increased insulin resistance. Okay, the fifth is to hit eight hours of sleep every night, but making sure that sleep is well balanced. Poor sleep is directly tied to weight gain around the belly, but also poor sleep leads us to feeling more hungry and more sugar cravings the very next day. Now, obviously the first step is just to make sure that you're simply even getting enough sleep. But on top of that, you wanna make sure it's well balanced, which means that you have enough REM sleep, deep sleep, and that you're actually getting that rest and repair. Now, if you're waking up feeling really rested and energized, then you probably are getting that balanced sleep. But if you're somebody who is like a little bit more tech and likes that data, that's where you can use one of the many different sleep tracking devices. Again, I've used my Fitbit for this in the past. What I personally like about it is that it does break down your REM, your deep, your light sleep and awake time. And it shows you benchmarks of how long you should be in each one of those categories versus how much you actually were in that. That way you can just start making progress towards adjusting your sleep so that you can get higher quality sleep. Okay, the sixth is to have meals, not snacks. The argument that most people will have around needing to have snacks throughout the day is that it helps them to not be hungry. Now, interestingly, sticking to meals and not having snacks has actually been found to lead to less hunger throughout the day. Plus, meals allow the body to become more metabolically flexible because you spend times when you're not eating and therefore the body can shift back into a state of fat burning. I love pairing a three meal structure with intermittent fasting for best results. Okay, the seventh is don't count calories. Seems counterintuitive, but here's what I always see happen with clients whenever they start to count calories. They start reducing everything across the board, protein, fat, and carbohydrates. They don't focus on the quality. They don't focus on the types of food they're eating. They just focus on decreasing everything in general. This can really rapidly lead to muscle loss and therefore a slowing of the metabolism. And this just makes it so you have to keep eating less and less and less in order to continue to see progress until eventually you just can't keep eating less 
you hit a plateau and the body even starts to gain weight. Instead, getting educated on the types of food that help to maintain or even slightly increase muscle mass, which therefore helps to maintain the metabolism, help to reduce hunger, and help make the weight loss process so much easier is such a better approach. In fact, this is what I've been doing on my own postpartum journey, everything in this list actually, and I've been able to make some pretty significant progress so far. Now, I know this idea can be pretty foreign on not counting calories for achieving a weight loss goal, but I did a whole video breaking down exactly this and why counting calories isn't really the best option. If you wanna check that video out, you can find it right here. Okay, the eighth is water, tea, coffee, and that's it. <laughs> now, of course, you can do some add-ons like sparkling water or water with lemon, coffee with a bit of heavy cream or nut pods. But if you are really looking to just really maximize your results during this 30-day period, then you wanna make sure you're sticking with water, tea, and coffee. Especially during this 30-day period, it can really help to kickstart your results, help you to start getting momentum and get excited about your journey. And when it comes to alcohol, if you really must have some type during this 30-day period, then the best options are going to be things like wine from places like France or Italy, where it tends to have zero added sugar or zero sugar cocktails like vodka soda. This isn't forever. And in fact, you could ignore this step if you wanted to, but by sticking to water, coffee, and tea, it really can help to accelerate your results. And then you can always add back in some other items if you want. Okay, number nine is to add three to five days of resistance training per week. Now resistance training is really anything other than cardio. So it could range from something like Pilates all the way up to CrossFit. Resistance training helps to maintain and even slightly increase muscle mass, which means it helps to maintain or even increase your metabolism during the weight loss process. Plus having really high quality muscle mass can also help to make you less carb sensitive, which means that you can have a lot more flexibility with the type of carbohydrates you're having, even eventually incorporating some medium or higher glycemic load carbohydrates without it working against your goals. Okay, number 10 is having 30 grams of complete high quality protein at every meal. Although some people might need a little bit more and some might need a little less. Now just exercising and just incorporating resistance training isn't enough to maintain muscle mass. We also need to have the protein to recover from that exercise. Otherwise, we're just breaking down our muscle with the exercise without ever rebuilding it. And then we get that muscle loss, which works against our goals. Plus getting enough high quality protein is really helpful for reducing hunger and sugar cravings, which just makes the weight loss process so much easier. And studies have found that those who eat a higher protein intake actually have better weight loss and fat loss progress than those who are just simply calorie restricting, even though they're eating the same amount of calories. Plus those who are eating a higher amount of protein also have less less weight regain than others. But the quality of that protein really matters. So make sure you check out my list of the best proteins for a weight loss goal with this video next. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love this science-backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. Come out new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.